My internet was both born in the Smeddy and we lived there. We were mum and dad and were grandparents and Uncle Timmy and Auntie Ina and we were there until we were fairly big bairns and then we moved into a pity house in Seaville alongside the big house like at the opposite side where, where Jimmy and Nesbitt and them stayed. It was just like a pity flat house and, and, uh, and then Jimmy had the barn and that. I suppose we spent with, with bairns in the ape. We just left that going in the ape. Must have been a nightmare for men because our clays must have been wheat all the time. <laughs> and just up the barn and on the vidal looking for eels and then when we got a big butt older we would fish for sulks on the pier and Jeanette being a butt older she would tie me till I passed on the pier in case I blew over. <laughs> I mean it was deep enough if you fell over. Get to the school in North of all. I mind my first day going to the school Uncle Andy had a motorbike and he took me to up to the school and I sat on the tank of the motorbike. There were never enough hours in the day to play outside and, and just ha happy time. And then we had Anne that would come down, Anne Slitter. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. She was the same age as me. And Margaret Walker, Margaret Nisbet was married to Jimmy, so we were kind of the four of us would always be playing together and then of course they were Marshall the next door, which was a pity but the younger. We were the only grandparents for both mum's side and dad's side, so I suppose we were maybe a pity but spoilt. We were grand folk. The folk up at Cam was mum's folk. And then of course mummy bought and daddy bought was in the in the smithy. After Jeanette married, we moved into the big house. That's where the doctors used to bite. And we moved in there. And we were there until I came here to Borough Park. We were there in that pity house, which was a, a butt and a bane and a pity close to me and Jeanette slept in. But you managed. <laughs> there were no fancy central heating or bathrooms or anything like that. You just Mum had a big bath and we'd be washed in that and she would wash the clays, walk to the well and get the water and heat it up and then we'd wash the clays. A different life altogether. The well was just at the back of the smithy. So it was just like a along the road. Wasn't that far and I mean and then when we moved into the big house, I mean, that had water, running water and things that happened. I mean, we were a lot older then. But when we were period, it was just hard times for them, but you really never literally told about it. I mean, I enjoyed the school. Like, we walk it to the, up to the school in, in North of all. I mean, you never told. I mean, they were in the cars and things like that to take you back and forth. And I do that like in the Morris with Jeanette. And that was lovely. And then you would come home and you would go out and you would play until they would fit you in at, at night time. And my, when, when Anne would come down and, and her folk, like Nellie and Sonny up at, up at their house, they would hear why it, they would whistle so I would keen what time it would be to come home because they were a likely at Seafield because I think it was the attraction of being on the ape when Jeanette's parents was born there she she didn't get to Ladwick in time and, and Brian was born in Seafield every Christmas we would get new frocks and new shoes and when said the grandparents would buy us, we were like, Mommy, a can, as we called her. And Auntie Nell and Uncle Robert and Auntie Nelly, 
they would buy with, with frocks and the other ones would buy with, with shoes and then the following year it was maybe something else. So we always had that lovely frocks at Christmas and new shoes. So we spent a lot of time we were growing folk up at Can. Mammy at Can and Uncle Robert would make us pretty houses and we would spend time up there. And I mean, there were very little traffic on the road. And one thing that we used to do, there were a gate at the top of the Can Road. And of course, there were cars coming to the doctor, which was usually Tom Brown. And we would, sometimes we would open that gate for them and we would get maybe a sixpence. <laughs> it wasn't very good when you were coming up the road with a car. And then we would sledge in the road if it came snow, so that was a, wasn't a very good thing. Oh, it was lovely. I mean, there were no grid there then and you could fairly whisk down that road. More the can road is the king's road we would sledge in. There were a piece that we used to jump on. It was like a pity. Well, we called it island, but it was just like a pity bat in the middle of the border. And if you were clever enough, you could jump to it. But sometimes you mustn't land in the board. <laughs> yeah, and we always did for eels. We would left stones looking for eels, and and we would go up to the hill where the Grand folk for the smithy, they had hens way up, out past Cannes. And we would go walk up there and get the eggs. Well, they would come with us and collect, or we would probably brought the eggs by the time we got home, and collect the eggs and then walk back to the smithy. That was quite a long walk. I don't know why they didn't hear it nearer. The can folk had their eggs just no far for the hoose. They had their hands. And they had a coo, which I had it. But <laughs> and Jeanette would like things like that, like going to the coo and milk the coo. He says, I don't like milk, so that thought of that was just awful. Because you would hate to drink that milk and it was still kind of warm. We used to play where the an old ruin was across the road for Seafield, like there an old barn place where we get were pits. Um we used there used to be about a gutter hunt there that we would be able to play. Near as the sea. I mean it it wasn't much but I mean there were brews in the banks and and the pity but that you could play there hunt but I mean that's all gone now. It's, uh, that's where the, we kept our pits and that across the road, because the pitch was cut up past the hill and then we would help with the raising of the pitch. And the smithy folk, they would hay high and, and you would work in the hay and you would help with the tarties and so I suppose we didn't maybe want to do that. We'd rather play in the barn, but... <laughs> and we had a pretty garden there across the road, this wheel that we thought was wonderful. Just we two or three pretty floors and a lot. To wish it was wonderful. Ah. Oh. I take the parts, yeah, and just a, a kind of fence out around it, and they were no, they were no garden there. But I mean, out at the back where they were, Auntie Mary left. She left in that pretty house. I mind Auntie Mary, she was a pretty fat wife. And it was just like a pretty room down the stairs and then she had this awful rickety stairs it was like I imagine like their bedroom was up the stairs. There was just one pretty window and then as you get in there were a door uh, like get through the archway there were a door on the left hand side where Auntie Mary stayed. And Polly, that's what she called that awful parrot. <laughs> and and the cat that was a grey cat monkey and then out at the back of there I mean they were like it all was was Jimmy Nesbitt's like here he had a sheep and that but I mean we had with clay slime out there and 
Auntie Mary had a pretty garden there with, with a tree in them. Just a pity kind of thing, but we didn't really have any garden when we were in, except the pity bit that we had over at the smithy. There were lots of boats, yeah, and folk would go over the water, like the kirk on the Sunday or go to the shops, or because they were not transport, it was walking. A regatta was a great thing, that was just the highlight of the summer. And you would go over the vow in the, in the boat. You usually don't hear the gear this thing and then walk to the lunch. We were always dressed for special occasions for the regatta. And that was the grand folk too. It was pretty tartan kilts we had. Kind of white bluesy things. And I seem to think we had some kind of a barity thing on with heats. Um, we weren't really allowed half in boats when you were pity, except you had an adult with you. And we really couldn't swim that well. I mean, you could certainly maybe save yourself around the pier if you fell around the pier. And of course, we had with pity horses, we would play out in the, out the back of the sea field up there, we would play in with pity horses. And, and then in the barn, we would, there were pieces of the barn, like it was across the road, and we would have concerts in there. And we would have singing and, and living next door to us, they were Jimmy and, and Ivan was. And he had a mouth organ and we would have this, we would have those concerts across there. I think that might have been just me and Jeanette and Ivan. Because Ivan, I mean, was blind, but he was he was a lovely person. And he could see a pity butt, but he had a pity tricycle that he would go on. We thought that was wonderful. He was such a lovely singer. Mam never had the very best of health, and and where we left, both Mam and Dad had asthma. And then, like, up and been, Jimmy and them kept her high. I mean, that was just a, a nightmare for somebody that left with asthma. They were the barn, and then they were, like, where Jimmy and them kept her coo. And then they had the dogs there as well, and then they were staring up inside. So that was, like, up to the west, because Mam used to get injections, because she would just be couldn't hardly brace. And um, I mean, the doctor would have been Dr. Brugger trying to show me how to do this, the man. Oh, frightening. I'm going to put down the mission hall. That was next day. Yeah, we used to have a, a mission hall there. Yeah, and then they would have meetings in there. They had the Sunday school there. And then they would have meetings in there. And Auntie Nell um, can. Um, she would play the pity organ in there, and that was just the, what you did on a Sunday. Because we're like grand folk and can, you didn't do anything on a Sunday. We would go up to Cam and he would sit and read the Bible on a Sunday. And me and Burns, we didn't want to sit still and listen to him. But that was something you did. You didn't... Uh, speak while he was reading the Bible. So you had to sit like, like mice. <laughs> Gina Grassfield was the, was our teacher at Sunday school. And then we would take pity bits that you would read out of the, out of our texts and we had pity books that we, we read out of. And we did that every Sunday. We would take, of course, you were dressed up on a Sunday. Yeah, so you wouldn't have been playing on the pier that No, day. no, I don't. You'd never been allowed to go a Sunday. I mean, they weren't anybody hang out washing or nothing like that. We would very often go up to Cannes on a Sunday and they would have what they called the new room and the end of the, the far away room and that would be our Sunday. We would have our tea up. <laughs> 
was up and can and it was kind of, you just all sat around and we had drawing, so we would draw pictures and things like that. So we tried to be on day by I would imagine, but that's what you did on a Sunday. There were a trawler that sank some way out in just between here and Fettler and the bars. And the lifeboat lay, lay at Seafield, and we would play on that. That was just, it was tied to the pier, like, but that was just the most wonderful thing that you would play on. Uncle Rabbit would go forever off fishing, and, and then, of course, you would get all this fresh fish, and then we would get the rabbits as well. And, of course, they, they would raise sheep, and then you're an awful cool at the head of camp. <laughs> so we had that milk. So, I mean, we, you, you never wanted for food or anything like that. There were always plenty of, plenty of food, and, I mean, you just ate what you got. Because they were recent modern and short fish and oh, it was lovely. They were the shop doing where Elizabeth Bartley and them had up there and then they were the flanksos. They were shop right down at the front. They were a bakery right down there. Mammy and Cam used to walk to the shop, which was quite a long time. She was a pretty body. And she used to walk to the shop and she had like a casey thing on her back. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was a long walk for a pity body. But then, they, of course, they would go across like on we a boat and they would likely buy their floor and all things like that. And she used to back Mama a cam and she had this wooden board thing. And she always had this white peony thing that she wore for her backing. And she would do this back and then we just lift that. She would bannock. Oh, Auntie Nell would make hot meal scones and hot meal scones and syrup was just a proper treat. But she I had this board that was always scrubbed and and clean and then they had this that they made blonde with that buttermilk and then oh that was revolting but Mm -hmm. I hated that as well because it was an awful cool. <laughs> I think it's just any cool with the button they offered with that smell, the same as that milk, it was warm. And then, of course, there were always digs with the hens. And yeah, when we left and saved it, we had jukes. Like when we were older, we left the jukes. And then one sat and we had a lot of baby dukes and then the other killed them all. And then up in the, at the heat of the vow, like over there you would get spoots. Jeanette could seem to catch them, oh, but then I just seemed to come home with my hands all torn and, and bleeding. She would walk backwards and then she would put them in her hand. That was a proper treat as well, hen, hen spoots. Me and Jeanette look at in there and there are a rowing tree growing in there. And I thought, where's that seed come from? And of course, he was growing lovely because he's all sheltered. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Mam had a white rose that grew in the garden and he was growing as well. He was growing, so he's still there. And I actually hear peace of him in my garden. What's I call Mam's rose, just a pretty white settling rose as you got it. And he was he was lovely, Mam had that in the garden and he was still growing. The front of the house. What Jimmy did in August. So I mean that the rose tree was flooring when we were around there. Did you think I've never asked you about Seafield that maybe wasn't that involved with that? Did you ever go guys and I was once. Oh no, we, when we were bairns, we would go guys and we, Piri Rabbit would make us hats with a straw and they scratched and you would go around North of all gathering money. The can folk, their pets was pretty bit further down the hill and they would always have like this flask of tea and egg sandwiches and that always tasted wonderful. 
of course you couldn't hardly walk coming back again to show it'd be a whole day if you would be at the pit hill raising. Like they were were on chess here staying in Carmel's wheel. And we got the Didi, I don't know why, but she would have that egg sandwich or having that in the pit hill that tasted far better as what you would ever eat at home. Yeah. And you were saying you were you collected money when you were guys and so did you put that towards Well they must have been a party of some sort. And we certainly had a Christmas party. Mm-hmm. That's what we what the new frocks was and the shoes. And we likely had a Halloween party too, but that was likely all we ever had. Except there were maybe a, a wedding on it that you were invited to. But they weren't much likely entertainment. Maybe the, I mean, Carrie and Billy's folk had that going to the pictures, like when you were older. And the mind when the like the coronation, they had all that floats that had their own lorries all rigged up and, and uh, we get up at Cannes, we sat up on the brig up at Cannes. They were pissed there like a stone, but I imagine they had their big bath there in the washed and we sat there and watched the floats going around north of all.